Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie and today we are doing the mid-year book freakout tag. <laughs> Okay, so yes, I am just a tad bit late to this tag as you're supposed to do it at the end of June and it is, it's July 17th. So I'm a bit late to the game, but I nonetheless did want to go ahead and do it because I feel like I've had a decent reading year and it's just fun to kind of like look back on what I've read so far this year and really just get myself into like the mental zone to think about what I'm reading for the rest of the year. Um, I just recently did post my video that was my summer reading plans and I just I just love looking back at what I've read and what I'm going to read so what better opportunity than this mid-year book freakout tag which was created back in 2012 by the youtubers Chami and Earl Grey books um, I will link them down in the description below um, but of course this tag has become a booktube staple over the years Pretty much everyone does it and I am not about to be the exception to that. <laughs> so I do have my stack of books here that I am going to talk about. Um, surprisingly, look how many of the books that made my list that I like physically own. That's kind of shocking actually. Um, I have in total read 36 books this year, which is solid. Um, I always put my book goal at 50 books per year, but I don't really have any like strong attachment to that goal or anything like that it's just I read when I can when I like it and you know we'll see what happens <laughs> um but I have read 36 books this year so we have a lot to talk about the first question is what is the best book that you've read so far in 2023 and the answer to that is there's really only one pick for me that is I'm thinking of ending things by Ian Reid I read this for my Ian Readathon where I read all of his books this year and I've just, I've become enamored with him as an author. This book did everything that I have been wanting a horror book to do, which first of all is actually scare me. Um, it's the only horror book I've read that I actually really felt scared the whole time and it just did exactly what I wanted, which had that psychological element to horror. And I was just so impressed by this book and I had to go out and buy a copy for myself because I absolutely adored it and nothing has been able to top it this year. The next question is what is the best sequel I've read this year and to be honest I don't really read sequels, I don't read series, I'm not really much into them um, but and I say this having not yet read it but I can assume that the best sequel I'm going to have read this year is the Walking Dead Compendium 2. I was supposed to read this in the second quarter of the year and I have not been able to start it so I failed in that little goal but I do intend to read it as well as all the other ones. So one of these is going to be the best sequel that I read in 2023 um, but for now let's just say it's this one. Next question is what is the newest release that you haven't yet read but you want to? I have a couple options for this off of my physical TBR. I probably have more somewhere in my, you know, you know, Goodreads list or something. But the two that were on my shelf, one is On Earth as it is on television by Emily Jane. This is an ARC copy that I received and it just came out at the end of June. So very new release. Um, and this is um, a novel about... I believe an alien first contact story um but it says it is intoxicatingly fun and somewhat satirical and kind of making commentary on our contemporary life via an alien first contact story i'm really interested because it does seem like it has a, a kind of different tone to it than um some other kind of books with this subject matter i do think it's going to be kind of more like light-hearted and just generally light in tone and I think like fun sci-fi is kind of like a newly um discovered genre for a lot of people and also just like it's working in publishing right now I think it's a really big trend to do more kind of like light-hearted um fun sci-fi so uh, I am interested to get to this and I hope I can make room for it soon it's on my summer TBR so we'll see if I can get to it. 
And then the other one that I have on my physical TBR is Ink Blood Sister Scribe by Emma Torres. This I got from Book of the Month and it is very, it's described as like very similar to Practical Magic, a movie that I love. I did read the book and I actually did not really care for the book, but I do love the film. Um, it's described as Practical Magic. There's, it's very witchy, but it's kind of like soft witchy, um, very... I think it's lighthearted, but there is like some degree of danger, so it's not exactly cozy, but it does have a lot of cozy elements um, and very much the witch vibe that I've been after all year. Um, and I do intend to do a fully dedicated um, video for the witchy books I've been reading this year. I've already read one and I have two more on my list for that, including this one. So I'm very excited to read this very soon. Next question is what is my most anticipated release of the second half of the year? Um, to be honest, like I don't usually have like super highly anticipated releases unless it's from an author that I know. I do know that Kylie Reed is going to have a new book coming out, but I don't know if it's actually coming out this year or next year. Um, Kylie Reed, author of Such a Fun Age, this was probably my favorite book of whatever year I read it in. I think it was 2019. Um, I absolutely adore this book and I cannot wait for the next one that she writes. I just don't know when it's coming out. So that one is pretty highly anticipated. But otherwise, uh, my book club is really interested because we read a book called The Appeal, which I actually have it as an answer to another question. So we'll get to that in a minute. But um, The Appeal by Janice Hallett, um, we loved that book and we are all anticipating um, her next release, which is called The Mysterious Case of the Alberton Angels. And also there is um, a kind of semi sequel to the appeal called The Christmas Appeal. And we are all very much anticipating reading that when it comes out later this year. Okay, my answer to this next one, I think this is gonna be a really, <laughs> this is gonna be a hot take. But next question is biggest disappointment. And oof, I'm really sorry to say, but it has to be the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin. Okay, uh, before I get dragged through the mud through this opinion, let me just say that I did not think this was a bad book by any means. Um, I ended up giving it a 3.5, maybe a 3.75 actually is probably better. Um, I There was a lot of stuff I really liked about this. This, for those of you who don't know, is a science fiction fantasy. Um, it's a trilogy and I actually own all three of them. Um, but I finally got around to reading this. This was a big goal for me this year was to, I mean, I said my goal was to read the trilogy, but honestly, I was just, to get through the first one, I, I was very, very happy with myself. Um, this is a sci-fi fantasy story. Um, it's very difficult to explain the kind of like magic system that it works in, um, but it is the winner of the Hugo Award 2016 and then the two books in the trilogy that followed it also won the Hugo Award in their respective years. So it's just a very widely, you know, critically acclaimed series and many fantasy readers really love it. So I was definitely expecting to be absolutely blown away and maybe that's why like when, you know, when I say this is the biggest disappointment, it's not that it's a bad book. I, there's a lot of stuff I really liked about it. There's a lot of things that it did well. The thing is, I was really expecting it to be spectacular because of how many people loved it. The people that were rating it highly were people that I tended to agree with um, in reading taste and what we liked. So I thought that was a good sign. And just overall, I just like expected it to be like really just blow me away in every regard. So maybe because my expectations were so high, it's just like inevitably you're gonna be disappointed. I don't know. Um, but all that is to say, I was slightly disappointed with this only because I didn't really feel like it was all that novel in that it's like, there was a lot of things about this that are very like interesting and new. Like certainly the magic system is very very interesting and new and different and like really it's you know it, it does a lot of really cool stuff but at the end of the day it felt just like any other fantasy sci-fi story to me like it didn't really do anything all that different at the end of the day like the plot structure the 
you know, everything, just the general kind of tropes, everything seemed pretty similar. So I guess I was just expecting something completely different. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I think I'm just going to be like, I think I can just admit that I'm probably in the wrong. Like this is a good book. Like this is a really great book even. It's just, I think I'm not a fantasy reader. I'm not a fantasy reader. I don't care for fantasy sci-fi. It's not really, you know, my thing, it, but I, I don't hit it on principle. It's just like, it's just not my genre. So maybe I'm not right to, to have much of an opinion on this book. I was just expecting my world to be changed by this book. And really, I thought it was just okay. I don't regret reading it, but like, it's just okay for me. <laughs> the next question is what is the biggest surprise? And that would have to be The Appeal by Janice Hallett. This is a book that I completely picked up on a whim. Didn't I saw it in Barnes and Noble, didn't know anything about it, but I was just very intrigued by the cover and by the synopsis. And on the front, it does say one murder, 15 suspects, can you uncover the truth? And it does say a wholly original puzzle. So that to me like indicated that it was very interactive and that you as the reader were gonna be playing a really active role in actually solving the case, which I do know, you know, you can play along when you read mysteries, but this felt like it was going to do something really different and just ask you to be more of an active participant. So I was very excited for that. Um, I pitched this to my book club and they did end up picking it, which was very exciting because we all read it together and tried to solve the mystery. And I did not have many expectations for this, to be honest. I thought it was just going to be, you know, a fun little murder mystery, whatever. And we ended up having a blast with this book. Not only is it a fun murder mystery, but it's also like just really cleverly written and the characters are done really well. It's written entirely uh, via like emails and text messages. Um, but the fact that like you're able to get such a sense of character from just, you know, emails and text messages and whatnot, like it's very impressive. And um, and there's like parts that are funny, like it's, it's actually just a really well done book. Um, so this was definitely a big surprise because I didn't expect it to be one of my top rated books of the year. Um, and here we are. Next question is who is your favorite new author or debut or new to you? You can decide how you want to answer that question. And I can't think of any debuts I've read this year um, or ones that I actually like really liked, I should say. Um, but I will say that my favorite new to me author, that is Ian Reed. Um, yes, I already said that his book was my number one of the year. So I'll show off another one. This is We Spread by Ian Reed, his most recent, and I had a blast with it too. Um, after doing my Ian Readathon where I read his three novels, I've just, it's cemented that I think he's going to be, you know, an author I constantly reach for whenever he has something new. I'm definitely going to read it. I really like what he does. I like his style. I like everything about all of his books. Even though I didn't like Poe, um, I still really like him as an author. Uh, so absolutely, Ian Reed could be a new favorite. We just have to keep reading. The next question is a book that made me cry. I don't really have a book that made me cry. I don't often cry when I read books. Um, trying to think of some that even came close. Um, I mean, I don't know. I might say that Cloud Cuckoo Land kind of got close. It didn't make me cry, but it definitely had a lot of emotional moments in it. Um, and I think that's probably the closest that I got. And, you know, I just didn't have anywhere else to talk about this book, but I did really enjoy it. Uh, so I did want to mention it because it was at least a four star read for me. I really, really had a good time with it. And I, you know, I probably could have cried if I cry when I read books, but I don't. Next up, a book that made me happy. That is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Oh man, I read this at the beginning of the year and it just filled my heart with like such joy and happiness and I absolutely adored every second of reading this book. It has all the autumnal vibes that I want. It's magical, it's cozy, it's delicious and indulgent and the romance is really fun and like, ooh, it's just, it's a good time. It made me so happy and I have not stopped recommending it all year, even though this came out like a while ago and I thought I was the last person to read it. If 
anybody asks me what book I'm recommending this year, it's The Night Circus. Next question is the most beautiful book I have bought or received this year. Um, I think it's a tie. I bought both of these while I was in England, but that is this gorgeous copy of The Wind and the Willows by Kenneth Graham, which I still haven't read actually, but it is just so gorgeous. It has some nice little illustrations at the chapter headings, and I just think it's a really adorable little book. And then also I got my hands on this edition of Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. It is gold leafed and just stunning. I'm very happy I found this edition because it's the one I always wanted. And the final question is what book do you need to read by the end of the year? I mean, I have an entire TBR stack over there that I really need to read. I have all the books listed on my summer TBR board that I need to read. I have all of The Walking Dead, well, the three left that I need to read. Um, so the answer is a lot, but I did pick three that I'm trying to make a priority for the second half of the year, um, starting with The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell. David Mitchell is one of my favorite authors. I absolutely adore Cloud Atlas and I can't wait to dig into this. I've been saying that for a long time, but I think I finally carved out the time in my life to do it. I am going to read this book in August and I could not be more excited. Um, it's an old book, it's not a new release, but I've been putting it off for, I mean, Lord knows why, but. Um, I also have A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolles. I don't think that's how you pronounce his name, Tolles, Amor Tolles. Anyway, um, a friend gifted me this book last year and I never got around to it. And I just keep feeling like this is a book I'm gonna really love. So I am going to pick this up very soon. And finally, The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is on my must read of 2023, the Dark Academia book of ever of all time. Um, but also I am doing a Dark Academia part two vlog later this year. And I will be reading this for that. Um, it's another one that I just think I'm gonna absolutely love. And actually that's really like, the common thread between these three books that I have right here is that these are all books that I think are gonna be five stars for me. Um, I just, you know, like, it's such a weird thing because I think these are gonna be five stars, but I haven't been prioritizing them. And I don't know if it's because like, my expectation is so high or like I need to find the right time to read them or what's going on, but these three are books that I would love to get through by the end of 2023. Well, there you go. Those are all of the books. Ah! All of the books <laughs> that, well, not all of the books. These are the books that I really uh, had something to say about in the first half of 2023. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jamie. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, week, everything. I hope you have a great evening and I will see you next time. Bye.